oftentimes you see a, a low to the ground aggressive deck like this that just kind of runs out of gas. And the idea behind the acclaimed contenders in this deck is that they give you the ability to play, you know, fervent champion, rimrock knight, these cheap creatures that, uh, you know, aren't really high impact on their own, but then be able to, to, you know, gas yourself up and back them up with those powerful equipment cards. Right, and this deck, it, it's interesting because it plays like kind of two roles. In the early game, it's just looking to pile on as much damage as it can. But then in the late game, it plays almost like a combo deck. And, and by late game, I don't mean actual late game. I mean, it's late game where it actually is looking to combo off. It can do things like put Steel Claw Lance plus Rimrock Knight plus Ember Cleave on to just kill you. It can do things like, as you mentioned, Rotting Registaur plus Ember Cleave is already eight power of double striking trample, which usually will just end the game yeah, you're after dead. any decent start. You're dead. If, yeah. you get, if you get Rotting Registaur with an Ember Cleave, you are, you are not going to yeah. get another turn usually. And I love how Ken built this deck because it is all in. It is making no apologies for it, and it hits hard. Also, it's not playing Weaselback Redcap, which I <laughs> appreciate from Ken. I think here comes a Lance getting down. Yeah, Steel Claw Lance. Now, it only costs one to equip <coughs> on Fervent Champion, but of course, Fervent Champion makes that even better. And uh, and the Steve has a, a pretty solid draw himself. He has the Paradise Druid into uh, a possible questing beast. He has Oko as well. Free equip there means that uh, three damage is hit plus the one from the original and now another three. So this Fervent Champion plus Boulder Rush is going to hit it as well. Boom. Has gotten in for all nine damage. Thank you very much. He also gets to cast Rimrock Knight. And this is all non Ember Cleave so far. Right. Right. You know, and this is kind of what I was Turn talking three, about. The nine. Yeah, gets you down, to, you know, to 11 and then tries to slam the door when you do this. You're like, oh, well, I'll play a Questing Beast and everything will be okay. And it's not. Oh, this is, this is not okay. Because, no. Because, you know, the, the fact that there are these two creatures in play and both of them have three power means that you play your land, it's untapped. You're coming in with two creatures, reduces the cost of the Ember Cleave down to four, and, and no, matter what this quest, no, yeah. no matter what this questing beast blocks, Ember Cleave comes down, equips to it, kills it with first strike, and gets more damage in. I love it. I, I absolutely love this deck. And of course, what we're seeing here is Ken adapting to a mid-range strategy, but that this deck is designed to run over zombies, right. right? That's what it's designed to say, okay, fine, you made four or five zombies, I'm still gonna kill you anyway. A big part of it is it's just designed to kill you as quickly as you can, as it can. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the uh, the Golos Ramp decks, you know, they are uh, built to win the long game. Mm -hmm. And the idea of this deck is you don't have a long game. The the end game for this is, well, turn five, because you're getting attacked by an ever yeah. creature. And by the way, this was a lethal attack. If, yeah. if, if, if uh, Nassif was like, well, let's just gamble and see if he doesn't have it, which, of of course he knows he has it. He played an untapped uh, Sacred Foundry here. He's dead. He takes right. eight from the Fervent Champion and four from the Rimrock Knight, and we're done. Now, as it turns out, he's probably dead anyway because he is still going to take the eight damage here, and he has to find a way to deal with the, the creatures on board. But maybe Oko can do it. I don't think Oko's enough here. I mean, you turn that, if you turn, you turn that Fervent Champion. Cleave. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you turn the, well, you don't turn off the Ember Cleave. You turn the Ember Cleave into a 3-3. Right. So, I mean, you, you're still facing <laughs> down a 3-3 uh, Fervent up, Champion. Upgraded. And, yeah, now, <laughs> instead of instead of being plus one so in double strike, oh you just still got God. a 3-3. Ken's deck, easily my favorite deck in the field. I read it, and I, I kind of made the mistake that a lot of people do. They looked at it quick and said, okay, yeah, I know this one. It's a Martin right. Knight's deck. It's like, no. No, it is not. Ken it, is, is it is very different. <laughs> and I, I, I think the, the, the biggest thing in this deck, which I find very interesting, is the Steel Call Lance. Mm -hmm. That's not something, you know, the, uh, for instance, Ben Stark is playing Ben Martin and Knights. Ephro and stuff. And, yeah, and yeah, they have they're not running the deck. it. Yeah. But the, the Lance, in particular with Fervent Champion, and we saw this game just comes down on turn two, equips for one less. That means it equips for free and just gets in so much damage so quickly. And yeah, we see, yeah, you can you can Oko Thief of Crowns, you can turn the Ember Cleave into an Elk. But as you just mentioned... <laughs> it's a 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> it's a lethal attack. Every single one of these is lethal. And there's... I mean, right now... Yeah, Ken just needs to go, okay, okay I'll just I'll attack, attack you with, all three with of my creatures. Right, I, I, I will pass this test from the Hall all of right. Famer. Yep, I will block, I will block, I will be dead. 
even a first strike. Yeah, he, he even <laughs> let it go quicker so he didn't have to watch the animation. And Ken Yukihiro and quick out of the gates. I do want to point something something uh, uh, else out. Mm -hmm. Ken he used all of his mana for the first four turns mm -hmm. and then had no more spells. Yes. Like that was that was a draw that, that was four cards that won that game. He was flooded, but the four cards he played were so powerful that the game just ended. That's right. Yeah, perhaps a different draw there. A little more interaction from Nassif, and things could have gone much differently, but that I, is not how it panned out. I'm quite curious to see how Nassif chooses the sideboard here because the Aether Gusts are clearly quite strong. Mm -hmm. um, one interesting thing, they can hit uh, the uh, some of the, the red creatures, right? They can hit Ember Cleave in particular. It doesn't hit Rotting Regisaur. Mm. Regisaur, you know, is kind of a problem sometimes for this deck. You have to Oko it. You have to have a Wicked Wolf that can survive it with Indestructible by eating the food. Voracious Hydra does give him the ability to uh, get a, a big creature down that can maybe outsize the opposing creatures. But you here gets the sideboard too. He has four Noxious Graph. Yes, he does. Four copies of Noxious Graph. Trying to defend yourself with a green creature, and I think it's a big part of why Questing Beast is coming out. Yep. You can't get that creature in, you know, on, the, on the battlefield and try to block with it when your opponent has not only those Noxious Graphs, but the Ember Cleaves as well, which just make that, that blocking so difficult for you. Ken's sideboard is hilarious, too. It's four cards. Yeah. Four of this, four of this, four of this, and three of Three that. of that one, yeah. Just another reason why I love this list here from Ken Yukihiro. One, one of the cards in his, in his sideboard that's particularly interesting is Chance for Glory. Mm. doesn't come in in this matchup, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, it gives your, your creatures indestructible. Yep. Uh, it's an instant. Gives your creatures indestructible, then you get an extra turn, and if you don't win the game at the end of the next turn, you're dead. You yep. lose. It's you lose the next extra turn. So it, it can just give you a, a time walk effect if you need a uh, you know you can take an extra turn uh, against uh, you know a, a racing style of matchup or if your you know your opponent is just like tapped out and you're like okay hit you play this kill you it can also save your board from a wrath effect and yep. then let you kill them the following turn. So very flexible anti control card uh, in a deck that's already is putting a ton of quick pressure on those decks. Looks like a keeper here from, from Nassif. He has Once Upon a Time and Breeding Pool with a Gilded Goose. Is it too risky? I mean, this looks like two lands Gilded Goose. I, I, feel, like got, I feel like you've got to keep this, right? Like, if you miss with Once Upon a Time, sure. Okay. You're, you're, in, a, you're in a really big, uh, really big point, point of trouble. But, but you get to see five cards you and do. just need any land? Well, he's going, f yeah. He's going first, so he's, you know, he just has to play it right away. He doesn't get another, another draw, but yeah. Five cards, does find land. I feel like, yeah, he wants basic forest here. There is the Gilded Goose coming down. And one of the cards that I really do like in the sideboard of uh, this Simic Food deck is the, the Love Struck Beast. Mm. Because against uh, opposing aggressive creature decks, you just play a 5-5 five, five for 30. Just a brick wall. You don't care if you can attack. You don't need to use the uh, the adventure to actually get a 1-1. One, one. You just put a brick wall in the way of, of this Knight of the Ebon Legion, and suddenly... So much of Ken Yukihiro's aggression is shut down. Yeah. And you can see, once again, Nassif taking his time. I anybody who's a fan of his stream or has followed him for a while, he is a methodical player. Calling Nassif methodical is... Uh, so the reason I chose <laughs> that word, Kibler, is because it's the word he chose to describe himself. Sure, <laughs> sure. It's not the one I would chose. <laughs> but you got to be fair to the guy. It's true. Ooh, he is just going to make a 1-1. One -one. I think here... He just really doesn't want to play an untapped well, breeding pool in this I, matchup? I think part of it is he doesn't necessarily want to use his food, right? He can play yeah. a 5-5, five, five, but if he plays a 5-5, five, five, then if he draws the land, he can't, he can't play a, uh, a Wicked Wolf. Right, of course, yeah. That makes sense. I, I actually think there's even some argument to, to just play your breeding pool untapped and make a food. Or, and or leave up Aether Gust. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, he decided against it. He did just end up playing the human half here. He's just going to take the one from the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Another one follows it up. Look at the hand, though, from Ken Yukihiro. It's highlighting many things about this deck. First thing, it runs Rotting Regisaur, which is a kind of a feature of Ken's list. It also highlights the mana. Right. <laughs> and particularly how it can be very, very rough. He has Tournament Grounds, his best land. It is the card that allows him to cast all of these knights and equipment. Um, it's easily the best land in his deck. It does not help with Wadding Registor's Correct. black mana, and he currently cannot cast it unless he draws uh, black mana by next turn. Yeah, he does have 11 sources of black mana, of actual black mana. Four shrines, four blood crypts, and, uh, and three copies of basic swamp. Worth noting, by the way, that uh, the choice to not block the Gilded Goose was largely respect to Rimrock Knight. 
mm. the, the adventure on Rimrock Knight, the plus two uh, attack. You, Boulder, don't, you Boulder certainly Rush. don't want to lose your, your goose there. Does find a claimed contender who's, thanks to the Knight of the Ebon Legion, is going to go looking, finds himself a fervent champion. <coughs> So all fine and dandy, but the triple rotting register, well, they're rotting away in hand here for Ken Yukihiro, and this could really po cause problems for him if he's not able to deploy one of those next turn. And the, He needs to get that ball rolling in quickly. Yeah, and the, the Lovestruck Beast, just as we mentioned, kind of a brick wall here, really yep. shutting down all of the aggression from Ken Yukihiro. Fortunately for Ken, though, uh, the Seaf is dealing with some mana problems of his own. He only has the, uh, the single food that he got off of the Goose, was stuck on two, finds his third land, but can't do much with them right now. Yeah, he's going to he's gonna take the line that you mentioned back on turn three there, where he's just going to pass, and this le leaves him the avail availability of making another food token with Gilded Goose, or if an opportunity rises, he can use Aether Gust to his advantage. Angrath's Rampage is uh, a draw for Yuki Hero here. I, I imagine huh. that's paying, that's a cyborg card that came in. Uh, I imagine that's largely paying respect to Planeswalkers. He perhaps wants a way to be able to like take out a Nissa. It seems like a, a fairly strange choice because there's just going to be so many small things floating around the board, yeah. mana creatures and such. Perhaps he just wants to use it to be able to kill an opposing mana creature on turn two. But his deck's ability to actually generate red black, actual red black mana, early in the game seems a little a little suspect. Yeah, I, I feel bad now. I was not bringing in Angrath's Rampage against Simic when I was playing his deck, and now I wonder why I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I do find it interesting, though, with, with Ken's build, because even with his extremely streamlined sideboard, you know, you really can't mess with the game plan that much. Right. Like, well, there's not a lot of cards you're just like, well, I don't need these in this matchup. They're all kind of the same or really important. I, I am curious the degree to which he is respecting Aether Guest. Like, are some of his Embercleaves coming out? Because that is clearly the cyborg card that Nassif's going to be reaching for. And, and frankly, if you don't have Embercleave in your deck, those are bad. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe that's sort of his, his uh, perspective, that he's looking to try to strand those and make uh, the cards that Nassif is actually bringing in weaker by taking out the, the primary targets for them. But now, you know, the, uh, the Voracious Hydras here don't really have necessarily great options to prey upon anything. Wicked Wolf only has one food as backup. Yeah, he could start gobbling up the Knight of the Ebon Legions, but he doesn't want to use up that food. Like, that would set him back a mana. He's got Nissa yeah, who shakes the world in hand, plus a Wicked Wolf, and he, it looks like he's just going to stay patient on a relatively stable board. That <laughs> Lovestruck Beast is putting in overtime. And much much like in the Fable, you know, you gotta you got to manage your goose carefully. You, you, can't just, <laughs> you can't just slaughter it, you know, use up all the food it's given you. It looks like he may crack an egg here, though. He could also just be paying one. Yeah, oh, interesting. And, and looking to, to kill the Fervent Champion. Sure. He gets himself a 1-2, fights the Fervent Champion. Or he could, just, he could just double the counters he wants. Nope. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I think that killing the Fervent Champion okay. looks to be the plan here. That does put up a blocker for one of the Knights of the Ebon Legion. And re realistically, there's no great attack here. Black there's Black Mana. Black Mana. We're going to see Rotting Register at the battlefield finally. Yeah, but I mean, one of the, one of the real disadvantages of Rotting Register is that, well, it, it rots away the rest of your hand. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, how powerful is Rotting Register at this point? I mean, it, it's, it's pretty clear he has to play one of them because his hand is three of them, right? Right. But now that there's a Lovestruck Beast in play, now that you know, the game has gone on long enough that uh, there's you know, quite a bit already developed on the Seaf side, even just in the form of, of chump blockers, how impactful is that at this point compared to how, how big it would have been on turn three? Yeah, that's right. The, the, the window has certainly closed on it being devastating, but... It may be a way for him to scrap back into this game because he's pretty far behind. Nassif still just not able to hit the mana in a comfortable manner. Finds another copy of Gilded Goose. Yeah, Goose will get loose. And, and this is actually a pretty big deal because it does give you know just the additional food right away and possibly additional food next turn. So Nassif can more comfortably use those food uh, for mana. And, frankly, the second copy of Gilded Goose also means he has access to five next turn to play Nissa. Mm -hmm. Looks like Ken's going to discard a Rotting Registrar. If he draws untapped mana here, he could fire off. Oh, he needed black, <laughs> but he did find it with a Swamp. He could fire off both of his spells but what's he and be doing empty handed I mean, yes. Just sack a creature, I guess. Because he's losing it anyway, right? Right. So it's just a free roll. 
If you're going to attack with Registrar this turn, do you, do you attack first and then play it? Good question. I suppose not. Like, if they're going to sacrifice the human, for example, you'd rather have them do that and then force them to block with something right. better. Yeah. Currently speaking, the Lovestruck Beast and the Voracious Hydra can team up to block the Regisaur mm -hmm. and kill it. And they will lose both of those. And the board state would be Gilded Goose, Gilded Goose, assuming the human is what gets sacked here. Right. This is interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think from, from Yukihiro's perspective, you know, he just wants to get the Regisaur down. So he's got to use this, even if it's not optimal. So the Fair Maiden's going to get... Sacrificed here. You see that chain go I out. I did. That was brutal. And still, you know, even with a, a, a very powerful hand here from the Seif, you know, so far the two Ether Gusts have yet to be cast, and right now they don't really have anything to do. And I think I think in Yuki Hero's <coughs> shoes, attacking with Register here, yes, it, mo it possibly trades with the Love Struck Beast. Uh, and the Voracious Hydra, Hydra, but you have another Hydra co or another Registrar coming down this turn, and you also unlock the rest of your creatures, right? Right, that's the key. That's the biggest thing, is that <laughs> right now there are four creatures in Yuki Hero's side of the board that are just not doing anything because of that Lovestruck Beast. So while trading this off may not necessarily seem amazing just straight up, especially after it's already eaten two of your cards, uh, it is a, a very big deal uh, to get that 5-5 five, five off the board. Yeah, it's a tough spot for Nassif, too. Even at 19 life, he can't really consider just taking it here. The Knight of the Ebon Legions will all grow bigger. But there isn't really a card that he's happy giving away here. He's not thrilled with Lovestruck Beast and Voracious Hydra trading off. So it's, yeah. Yep. Like you said, the, the damage has been done by the Regisaur to, to Ken, but at least it's going to do some back to Nassif. And he's just going to bite the bullet here and make the trade. But then Ken can just follow up with another, another Rotting Regisaur. And as you mentioned, now all of a sudden the Knight of the Ebon Legions times three have good attacks because they have the ability to use that pump. Though, the, the, you know, there's that Wicked Wolf. And he's, he's <coughs> going to be getting food number three. Mm -hmm. If Nasif draws a land, oh, or, well, no, nah, that doesn't work. Because he has to eat up food. Right, he has to food. eat food to make food. Mm -hmm. It's like the vicious farm industrial complex over here. <laughs> so yeah, if, if Nassif had drawn a land that turn, if he drawn an untapped land that turn, he could absolutely swing the game by just Wicked Wolf into Kill Your Regisaur and have just a giant creature against an empty hand. Still powerful here. You know, he can, he can play the Wicked Wolf, and it is at least you know, going to be able to take out something. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here comes Wicked Wolf, and it can either eat a food to get to 4-4 four four to clean up the Acclaim Contender, or it can just gobble up one of these knights straight up, and that's what it's going to do. Now he's deciding if he wants to burn a food to get a goose and a food back. Seems free-ish. Unless, yeah. unless he needs an additional food gained right. you know, over the next like two to three turns. It just gets him an extra goose in the play right now, which can possibly just chump block if he wants. <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah, it does present seven damage as a chump blocker against yeah. the Regisaur. Yeah, he's probably got to do that. Again, uh, riding Regisaur triggering here. Ooh, Ooh the noxious grasp. grasp. That's, uh, it, it, it seems better than it is, though, because yes, there are the two wolf. foods sitting up for the Wicked Wolf. Yep. So Noxious Grasp cannot kill the biggest creature in the board. Oof. He can Noxious Grasp the Goose. Yep. I mean, he has to, he has to play it. He's got a Regisaur, right? Yep. Noxious Grasping the Goose does unlock one of the Knight of the Ebon Legion connecting with FaZe. Yeah, and if the Acclaim Contender ends up getting in as well, then the Knight of the Ebon Legions are going to get counters. Like, this one... It, it, wow, even this draw just, like this, this draw, yeah, it, it doesn't kill the biggest thing, mm -hmm. but... It, it, it prevents that from blocking multiple things, right? Like, it prevents it from, from possibly just chump blocking the Registrar and allowing Wicked Wolf to eat something else. It prevents it from getting in the way of, of Knight of the Ebon Legion. You know, if, if, for instance, Wicked Wolf was going to block and become indestructible to stop the Registrar. Ken's deep in the tank here. He knows he's going to cast Noxious Grasp. 
It's just a it question actually even of like the, the one life loss also adds up to the trigger from uh, from Night of the Ebon Legion too to get them to get them the uh, the plus one plus one counters. So let's see what happens here. Interesting. He's going to attack first, and I th I think that maybe this is. Th like hoping that that you know okay well I'm gonna I'm gonna try and use this after the attack, <laughs> possibly targeting your wicked wolf, in order to you know make you use food you don't want to use. Oh, interesting. To to try to shut off a gilded goose mm -hmm. from making mana next turn. Right. You know, f if for instance, Ken Yukihira decides that wicked wolf is gonna block a claim contender and he sacks he sacks a, a a food for it, then you're like okay, well now I'm gonna knock his graph. Now you have no food. Right. Because it forces Nassif to sacrifice the other food or lose his Wicked Wolf, which certainly doesn't seem like an option. Right. So instead, that goose that we mentioned last turn is going to jump in front of the big dino and soak up that seven. And the Wicked Wolf is looking to eat a Knight of the Ebon Legion. As and it stands, that will happen. Well, there, there is, I mean, there is the, the activated ability of Knight of the Ebon Legion. You know, he, True. Can, he can give it uh, the plus three, plus three and death touch, which will require him to sack a food. And then, you know, again, the Noxious can Grasp can, can possibly, possibly uh, uh, you know, require him to use the, uh, the other, uh, other food to keep that Wicked Wolf alive if he wants. Yeah, and, you know, I kind of like squeezing Gabriel Nassif's mana here because he has struggled all game on just three lands. Mm -hmm. It looks like that isn't the plan, though, for Yukihiro because he let that first food get eaten by the wolf, that has resolved. So Ken is going to do similar, though. He's just going to force the issue here by pumping the Knight of the Ebon Legion and kind of enticing Nassif into go ahead and uh, eat the other well, food. Crucially, the Noxious Grasp is an instant, too. Yes. So he can choose to play the Noxious Grasp to prevent the Wicked Wolf from being able to block. Right. He, he can, you know, okay, well, I'm not going to use it now to just push some damage through. I'm going to use it. He could also just kill the wolf. Right. Well, now in response, yeah, to, yeah. to the, uh, the Oko, because he did use the other food. Right. He also could kill Oko. I don't think he will. I think he's just going to take out the wolf now. Wow, this worked out well for Ken Yukihiro. Yeah. Jeez, nice work from Ken there. Oko just making a food, which does unlock one goose to make mana. But look at the board. Right. There's just a lot on the board for Ken Yukihiro here. Got the Registrar's going to eat his non-existent hand. Yep, now he's going to play land. an untapped Godless Shrine because that represents the second pump on Knight of the Ebon right. Legion, and he's going to be slamming hard here. Yeah, I know, Nassif. <laughs> Boy, Nassif, it feels like he had the tools this game, but somehow missed land drop after land drop right. after land drop. I, I do want to point out the two Aether Gusts in his hand, too. Yeah. You know, I did mention that we were a little bit surprised to see the Angrath Rampage in the hand for Ken Yukihiro, but if that was just a swap, part of taking out Embercleaves for fear of Aether Gust because he knows that's Nassif's answer, that's a, a brilliant plan that strands those in his hand. And we've only seen two spells from Ken that could even be interacted with on Aether Gust, and one of them was Fervent Champion. Right. right. He just has not... I mean, maybe it's just the way the draw went, but it could be sideboarding as well. Mm -hmm. Ken has an interesting decision here as well, though, because, look, he wants to try to get Nassif dead as soon as possible. We know that. But Oko really does present problems, right? right? Like, putting the Registaur down to 3-3 three, three is a big difference. Or, or taking it. The minus 5. Yes. You, you can give you a food, take your... You, know, you can't take the Registaur. You can take one of the, 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 other, the other creatures. Right. Yeah, but you, you, you turn it into 3-3. Three, three. Uh, and then you could possibly take either that or whatever. But if you do turn that into a 3-3, at least you're not discarding cards to it. And it looks like Ken is going to respect Oko here yeah, I, and send the 7-6 and the 3-3 three, three at it. Right. So here, what he's doing is trying to prevent a uh, at least the swap ability. He, he says, you have to chump block with Gilded Goose or you can't trade me a food for my 3-3. Three, three. Mm -hmm. It looks like one goose is going to jump in front of the Knight of the Ebon Legion, but that means that Oko is going to get set pack in here taking... Oh, no, I'm wrong. Oko's going to get down to three loyalty. Yes. Wow, but Nassif took the seven. He's seven down the to face eight. It's a lot of damage, and that right. does grow the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Right, so it can't get stolen now, at least effectively. Woo! 
Ken's trying to find the line and now finally land number four for Nassif. Is it too late? I mean, he finds the force which lets him play Nissa, but Nissa just gives him a 3-3 three, three, and he's facing down huge, huge creatures. Right, he can Oko the Rotting Registrar, make it a 3-3. Three, three. He can also make a 4-4, four, four, fight the acclaimed contender, but both the, and turn something here into a 3-3, three, three, turn the Rotting Registrar into a 3-3. Three, three. Boy, these Aether Gusts just oh, sitting sorry, three, in the uh, three four rather for the Voracious Hydra. But then Knight of the Ebon Legion does not quite represent lethal if it comes through. All right, it's going to be Nissa. At Nissa, you know, does give him a three three. I mean, he does need to have a blocker for Knight. So well, he can he can uh, untap a forest here. All of his lands are forests, mm -hmm. and then he makes a food, so he can block and then sacrifice the food with the mana he has left over to go to eleven and take that. But I think he has night. to turn Registrar into a three three. Ugh. Yeah, this is this is just a brutal spot. Just so much pressure from Ken Yukihiro. Yeah. So he if he makes a Registrar into a three three, so, get, so this then plan, he can chump block and still takes. Well, this, this plan Six. looks like it's chump block Regisaur, sacrifice food. That puts you to 11. There's two pumps on the Knight of the Ebon Legion. That's uh, that's 12. Which, yeah, I don't see Doesn't work, this right? plan working. I don't know that any plan works, to be fair. Yeah, that's true. But if he had made Regisaur into a 3-3, then maybe he blocks Knight of the Ebon Legion and doesn't die. It looks like this one's fully slipped away here from Gabriel Nassif. He lost a quick game one. This game, ugh, his mana just would not quite cooperate. It was simply a quantity issue. He's had Voracious Hydra and Nissa in his hand for the duration. He finally found a, a chance to get Nissa on the battlefield here, but it just looks like it's too late. I guess, yeah, he, bl he can block Regisaur. Oh, actually, he's going after Nissa. Okay. Because if he, if he just sent everything to face. If he just sends everything to face, he then can Brady jump block pulled? the knight, mm -hmm. sacrifice the, the, the uh, and food, be, be go to dead one. To exactly Wait, no, seven, go to one. Yeah, it's 7, 10, okay. three, go to 11. But because Ken is sending to Nyssa. So Ken's not prioritizing getting the Seif down to one. Yeah, which He's I think, is, which if I think I can't fine. kill you this turn, then right? I, I want I want to get rid of the Nissa, which totally makes sense. It totally makes sense for him to to take this route, considering there is the opportunity to stay alive from Nassif. So Nassif's going to trade off breeding pool for a claim contender. Go to eleven. He could take up to nine from the knight. Oof. It's close. Mm -hmm. it, you know, the real issue here for Nassif is just the two ether gusts in hand that are right, they, doing nothing. Those are, have just been, you know, rotting more than the Regisaur. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. The elk is green, right? Mm. If you elk something, you can Aether Guest it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Combo? I wonder, I wonder if last turn, if he had elked one of those... Rather than making a food, he has two mana from the breeding pool available because it is a forest. That's interesting. Maybe that's part of Nassif's longer game plan here. I mean, he can also he can also just gust his own Nissa here if you if he wants to do that, but I don't think there's any way that wins. Right, because he has to draw it. Then. And also, his breeding pool's dying. Right. Yeah, so that's not it. He goes down to five here and loses Nissa in the process. And losing Nissa is also pretty devastating. He, his Guild yep. can't produce mana anymore. Right. I mean, uh, he has the Oko, but. But we're kind of counting Oko on turning something into a 3-3 three, three here, aren't we? And as you said, maybe even sending it packing. Mm -hmm. yeah, if, you, if you turn the Knight of the Ebon Legion into a 3-3. Three, three. It, it will be a 6-6, six, six, but right. you gust it. Mm -hmm. And then chump lock with the goose. But then then what? Right. Also, let's not forget Black Lance Paragon in hand for Ken will be on the battlefield before his untap. So there, there's another source of damage here for Yukihiro that uh, Nasif currently does not know about. 
He's going to play Temple of Mystery and put a second copy of Voracious Hydra on the bottom. He's already got one in his hand that he can't seem to get out of it. So he did, in fact, turn the Knight of the Ebon Legion into an Elk. It does have three plus and plus one counters on it. It is now Aether Gustable. <laughs> this is also not lethal. This Paragon can get through and knock Nassif down to two. He can put the goose in front of the Rotting Registor and still be alive somehow. Yeah. Does he want him to draw Knight of the Ebon Legion or something else? I think he wants him to draw something else. So, yeah. And that did work out well for him. It was the land. So first things first, got to put the goose in front of the Registor. Ether gust away this knight, which is now an elk. And by the way, good artwork there. That's accurate. <laughs> yeah. The uh, art description knew how this would be used. They did. They did. Yeah. So <laughs> down to two goes Nassif. Now, the question I have from this point is, where does he go from here? Well. A voracious hydra. I mean, he can play Hydra as a 0-1 to jump block. Could he... If that land was untapped, he could have played a 3-4 Hydra, eaten the Paragon, and had a chump blocker for the Regisaur. Right. Because he knows that Yukihiro's draw step is going to be the Knight. That's not going to kill him next turn. I mean, he can turn the Regisaur into an Elk, Aether Gust it, and then have the Hydra as a chump blocker for Paragon. Right. He can play <laughs> a tiny Hydra as a chump blocker, make food... Sacrifice food. Right. Yep. <laughs> also now. I mean, he's still just clawing his way through. There's a wicked wolf. Wonder if he's just gonna play a baby hydra and use Ether Gust plus Oko. He does have options here, and he's not gonna die, at least the way it sits. He left that wolf on top too. He did. Which how does that, I mean, I guess the wolf plus Oko at least gives you a chump blocker every turn. A permanent chump blocker for the Regisaur. Okay. What's, okay. But, ha, huh? Wait. You're dead. What do we miss here? I, I don't think we missed anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know that Nasif was winning that game Regardless, but that, that certainly just left him dead. Right. All right. Well, that is Ken Yukihiro picking up the match. Two games to zero. Game one, that was easy for him. That went exactly how he won. One, two, three, four, you're dead. Game number two was a real scrapper right. between these two. And, and I am really curious about what the cyber plan was for you here. And I, you know, I, I don't, I don't expect him to tell us mm -hmm. because there's, you know, there's a lot of other people playing this deck, but that looked very, very different than some of what we expected to see. And, uh, you know, Nassif sitting there with those gusts in hand had, you know, 